Leah flicked the switch to send the request to land message to the base, not bothering to check whether she got the okay. She tried not to rush through the steps to acclimatise the ship to entering the atmosphere. Changing a setting too soon could result in irreparable damage to the ship, or to her. She was eager to land, eager to be off the ship, not just for the glory of breathing non-recycled air and eating fresh food, no. Leah was eager to land on this particular planet for a whole separate reason. The same reason she had pushed through without her scheduled stop at base 69 on the chance that she might get a little more time here. Leah scrolled through her messages, looking again for anything new, but only finding old conversations with the bases, planets, and her mama's statements about how their people didn't participate in long-lasting relationships, or really relationships at all. Friends with benefits was about the closest thing they had to relationships. So Leah's infatuation with this alien was absurd and sure to end a disaster. Leah didn't care. She didn't believe it. Not really. Finally, the ship docked. No bleeding ears from atmospheric pressure. Leah had done a good job. Then again, she always did. Leah shoved her equipment away, yanking her overnight bag from its place overhead and dashed off the ship. A flash of brightness in a blue face, clouded with glittering silver-white hair. She was as beautiful as ever, more beautiful than Leah remembered. Etty, she breathed. Leah! Etty dashed forward to wrap Leah up in her arms. Etty looked at Leah's sleeping face. Her serpentine braids lay around her head in a sunburst. She debated whether to tell Leah about the most recent incarnation of the conversation she'd been having with her parents upon telling them of Leah's imminent arrival. We don't create monogamous relationships, George, yet, her dad had said. Leah and I are open to the idea of polyamory, Dad, Etty had sighed, putting her cutlery down, appetite gone in the face of the impending conversation. She only had one family dinner every circle of Lunar Object 1, and every time in the last three planetary orbits, the conversation had strayed to Etty and Leah's relationship. As expected, Etty's mama had piped up with, her people just don't maintain relationships. We just don't want to see you hurt. Leah and I have discussed this at great length already. We're very adept at communicating with each other. That well may be, but what about when she finds somebody else to be enamoured with? Her dad countered. You literally just said we're not a monogamous species. Her starting a relationship with somebody else, as well as me, isn't a problem. It's even less of a problem because Leah and I have discussed the possibility. There's no need to get agitated, Georgette. We have this discussion every time we have dinner. It's probably my own foolish fault for bringing up the fact that she's coming here, but I didn't want any of you barging in because you didn't know, like you did last time. Loves. Etty's papa had interrupted, finally looking between his two spouses. Our daughter is intelligent, an adult, and well capable of caring for her own heart. Should your pessimistic premonitions come to pass, we will be here to help her through it. If they do not, you would prefer not to have alienated your daughter. Or am I wrong? You're staring. Leah's shocking green eyes were open. You're pretty, Etta smiled. You're worried about something. Leah stroked her hand up and down Etty's back. My parents... Seems like the whole universe is against us sometimes, Leah sighed. Do you think we're just trying to postpone the inevitable heartbreak? Whoa! Leah pushed up in the bed, yanking the covers for some semblance of modesty. Where did that come from? Are you trying to end things with me? No, I just... Three planetary orbits without you and battling off my parents started to affect me. Leah sighed. Thinking of retiring. You're way too young to retire. But it would let me stay here with you. Move in properly. Maybe assuage some of those concerns. You want to move in with me? The smile stole over Etty's face, a beam of bright sunlight glinting off a lake. More than anything. If you like this, you can find more of my written work on nopoodles.wordpress.com. Check out the playlist for more read-alouds, and if you'd like to support what I do, there's a link to my coffee account in the description.